was spent when Poland was still in the communist sphere of influence. How Talk to me a bit about your early life. I think that the most important part of growing up in communist era is that we, we all were very poor. And actually, I think it's a great experience. And if you if you were never poor in your life, you have no idea what does it mean. But if you were, and if everybody around were poor, then you have this sense of, I don't know, social, social problems that can be caused because, uh, caused because of, you know, lack of money and lack of any other things that you need to survive. So I think it was the really, really good part of my life. <laughs> of course, not communist. I'm so happy that we are not uh, in this in this world anymore. But being poor was cool. <laughs> it's a really interesting perspective. Tell me why was it the the solidarity, the sense of everybody being in the same experience together. Yes, because it was like, you know, you, for example, my parents couldn't have a telephone at home because there were no telephones. I don't know why. Uh, so every time you wanted to call somewhere, you had to go to your neighbor's home and ask, can I please uh, <laughs> make a phone call? And it was, you know, it was a great great opportunity to meet people now we don't meet each other we don't know who who lives next door so yeah that's i think that's how solidarity is is made <laughs> you were quite young still when the when the change happened how how aware were you of it i wasn't really aware of it of the political context but I re I realized that very rapidly there were there were children at my school that were still were poor and the other who became rich and they had better clothes and better staff and so on. So yeah, that that, that was something that we couldn't uh, that that we had to see. What was the place of, of theatre in your childhood or your adolescence? Well, I'm from I'm from theatrical family. My father is a theatre director and, and a playwright. And my mother also writes, uh, mainly for television. But, uh, but we all live very close to theatre. So I was raised up in theatre and it was totally natural for me to live this kind of life. Uh, but then <laughs> when, when I grew up a little, I, I thought that I hate this kind of theater that my father uh, was making because it, it, wasn't, it wasn't cool, you know. I thought it, it was so old fashioned. And so I, I decided never to work in theater. <laughs> Because I thought it's it's just for for old, boring people. But then when I was sixteen, maybe uh, I, I grew up in in Warsaw, and 
uh, I started to to watch the shows by Grzegorz Jarzyna or Warlikowski and the other directors that are, I don't know, maybe 10 years old than, than, than I am. And, and I fell in love <laughs> because I realized that theater can be uh, can be glamorous, beautiful. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the basic thing when when you're sixteen. When did you start to realize that it was where you wanted to be professionally and as a person? It started when I was studying. And I, I also worked at the television uh, and I wasn't really happy in TV shows because it was, it, it was nice. People will, were really, really nice. But, but I thought that it was, I couldn't, I couldn't speak with my own voice. And then I I met my my boyfriend then, uh, who was a playwright, and I realized that I want to be where where he was. I want to you know meet these people, travel with him, and watch as as much theater as possible. <laughs> when I started to uh, to be in this world. I realized that writing for theater is something for me because, you know, when you write for television, you have this idea and there are a lot of people who, um, who take part in it. But when you write for theater, there's only you and director and actors. So you are all one team. And, and I think it's so much more fun <laughs> is, is the relationship with with the director uh, an easy one for you <laughs> yeah it's it's not it's it's never easy even even uh, even the relation with the director i work with who's my partner in life uh, and it happens that I really, really hate him <laughs> during that job <laughs> because he's always, um, he gives me a lot of space because he believes I'm the smart one in the team, but at the end he makes the decisions. So, you know, it's, it's, it's fight, it's fight all the time. <laughs> so this, this, um, maybe slightly idealized world that you depicted of the theater compared to television it's also has its its uh, challenges yeah but at the end we are all sure that we want to make the best show we we can make and i think in television there are a lot of <laughs> a lot of other things that are important not not the not the idea not the thought beneath all the all the work have you ever wanted uh, to write not for performance or was it always uh, writing scripts for performance yeah I, I write I write prose from time to time but honestly and I enjoy it I love it but it's not the way um, you know it's it, it, it's not a profession for me I can't earn money. <laughs> so, you know, that's, that's the problem. <laughs> uh, because the, the prose you write, it's not novels? Or it well, is... I, I write short stories, but, well, if you, if you write uh, like 10 short stories, what can you do? <laughs> You can publish it, but it's also not not very. Um, it, it it will not give you uh, a lot of money to feed your children. So uh, at the end, I usually uh, adapt this this short stories to 
I don't know, play or, or a script. I read a bit about one of the, the, the plays that you'd done called Heaven and Hell, which I thought was definitely sounded like a play I would want to go and see. Can you talk a little bit about the idea behind that, the story and, and where that came from? Oh, uh, that, that, that came from a real pain, actually. And the, the, the idea is, uh, the story is about mother who's a DJ and she, and she dies. <laughs> She's a single mother and she dies. Uh, and she goes to heaven, but she fights God because she wants to go back to her son and and um, God is really offended so he he uh, he sends her to to help and it's all based on 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 her story she tries to go back to her son I was very sad at the time because I had to leave my my son who was seven uh, because I travel a lot and 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 I go to work to other city. I, I live in Warsaw and I travel to Wrocław. Uh, yeah, and I thought that what will happen if I will die one day during a car crash or I don't know. And at the time, my son also asked me. I think that was his idea. He said, mom, I'm afraid you will die. And we were brushing our teeth. So I couldn't uh, answer immediately and I had to think about it. So I told him after I thought a while, I told him, yeah, I know that's, that's really hard. And he said, thank you. And then I realized that if you want to talk to children about death, you have to be honest. You can say, no, I'm not going to die. <laughs> like, because they know it. They know everyone will die. So you have to be honest. And you can also, you know, give some sense of humor to make it easier. But, you know, the truth is that we all will die at the end. <laughs> you write a lot for children. Um, do you see a difference in in writing for an audience of young people? Yes, there there is one difference. If you write for young people and children, uh, you you have to you have to base the story on emotions. You can't rely on intellectual. Um, ideas and it's it's uh, it's really hard I think it's even harder because when you write for for adults they you, you can you can always put there some I don't know quotes or links to other uh, other um, plays or novels or films but if you write for children there are no um, this this net of um, of what of of ideas they don't have it they don't have this map so there's only you the the child and your story <laughs> but you're also able clearly to write about them in a serious way to write about death you've written a play about the origins of Poland the myths of Poland if I understood correctly. <laughs> How do, you, yeah. how do you talk about things like that with children? Yeah, I had to do this be because it was, we are still in this situation when conservatives, they, they try to take the history from us. They try to write it uh, in their way. So I realized that's what we have to do. We have to write it the, the way we see this. Uh, and that's why I wrote this play. I, I had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> you know, it's just 
it's it's just when you when you uh, think about the myth and then you try to put it inside real people like this characters who are not heroes superheroes but normal guys somewhere in you know uh, Mazovia or <laughs> somewhere in Poland 2000 years ago no no not 2000 sorry 1000 years ago and how how did it go did did uh, were you pleased with the result with uh, how children responded to it yeah yeah <laughs> Because oh, um, there was some uh, some what do you say like uh, hooks? Is that the word? I don't know hooks. Like the actor saying, for example, "Hello, children. Who are you? Are you from Poland? Are you from <laughs> Poland? What does it mean that you're from Poland? Please tell me." And children were re responding. And that's really interesting. What's in their mind? What does it mean to be a Pole? Because actually, <laughs> that's funny. <clears throat> I, I really don't know what does it mean. And that's why probably I wrote the play because I was wondering, what does it mean? What do I have to do to be from Poland, a Pole? Uh, and what, what does it mean that my, my, my partner is Czech? What's what's the difference? I I don't really see these differences. So, do you have a sense of your role as a writer um, in in society? It's quite a privileged position in some ways. Uh, how do you feel about that? Well, I think it's a great privilege. It's a mission, also. It's really obvious, I think, in Poland, especially because we have this great tradition of theatre that is not only entertainment, it's, it's, it plays great role in all social changes. So for me, it's obvious that it's my job to, to defend um, people who are not defended, to, to not to let uh, other people rewrite history. I think that's the base of it. You defend people that can, are not defended and defend ideas that are not defended and, you know, just to check, uh, check on the mainstream ideas. Just ask the questions, really. Do you ever fear that in doing that you're speaking um, mainly to people who agree with you? That's the difference also between theater for adults and theater for children. Uh, my audience is not convinced to anything yet, so <laughs> I can convince them. <laughs> no, maybe not. Maybe, maybe it makes no difference, but I, I still believe that the children are uh, the audience that, that can really Mm, learn something in theater and change their minds and open their minds. I don't have to, and I don't want to change anybody's mind. I just want people to, to think, you know, and ask questions. So your your partner is Czech, and you work in in both countries and indeed in different parts of of the countries, um, and you've also had success with having your work. Um, translated and performed abroad. How, and yet we've been talking about to some extent, I have an impression of, of the audience you have in mind as a Polish audience. And I wonder if you can say a little bit about what it feels like, you know, is, is there a home audience and a wider audience? Oh, well, that's a good question because uh, I think that if we write for children, it's really, it doesn't make a difference because children are, are I, I wouldn't say they're the same, but uh, we were talking about this, this intellectual um, um, map 
and they don't have it. So it, it doesn't matter. We we put on stage uh, Heaven Hell in, in Poland and then in Czech Republic and children were, were reacting the same way. But it's really hard when you try to write for adults because, <laughs> because it turns out that it's all so different. It, even if you think how different can it be from uh, Poland to Czech Republic? But it is, it's very different. <laughs> How do you see Europe today? Uh, uh, living in a country that has become one of the important members, one of the largest members of the European Union, does that have any importance to you? And, and if so, how do you feel about it? Well, of course it, it has great importance for me and I think for everybody I know. Um, you know, the, the problem is that European Union was created to prevent another war and people don't remember that anymore. So, and young people even younger than, than, than me. So uh, I'm really worried about, about the future, about, uh, about Poland in European Union, but also about the whole idea of European Union that of course can be criticized for a lot of things, but the main idea was to stop another war in Europe. And that's something we don't want to see anymore. We, we just, I don't know. I think that if European Union will collapse, then we will end up in hell in this really small continent with a lot of very proud nations. We've been in, in lockdown because of the pandemic uh, and we're emerging into a, a very different world. The theatres are closed. Um, most of us who work in the arts uh, have no work at the moment. How, how do you see the future? <laughs> I would like to say that everything will be okay, but I'm not so sure because in many countries, culture is the last thing that the governments are uh, taking care of. So I hope we will get better in six months or something but i also work in theater and i know what happens to a theater that is closed and how much money we lost and we can't really we can't really uh, make any plans for next years and i'm really worried about playwrights actually because new play is the thing that is easier to remove from project to make it cheaper because you can't you can't remove actors you can't remove director but playwright well oh, we don't need it. we don't need those people we have shakespeare <laughs> you know so yeah i'm worried about that my sense is that people are asking important questions about how we have been living and whether there needs to be change. And I just wonder whether that, that's something that, that writers can make a contribution to. I always believed in this. It works like that. At the beginning, there are philosophers and people who think and make gr great ideas. And there, there are artists that take these ideas and put it in something that can be understandable for a lot of people that don't read, you know, philosophers. <laughs> so we always do that. And I think we will continue to do that, maybe in a different world, but 